Today on Cassidy's Craveable Creations, we're making a keto cashew chicken stir fry recipe, which is a 30 minute meal and tastes just like takeout, only better. So for the really easy cashew chicken sauce, we're gonna need sweetener. Any sweetener will work. I like this brown swerve sweetener. Sesame oil, coconut aminos or soy sauce, if you're not paleo, rice vinegar, fish sauce, sherry cooking wine, or you can substitute chicken broth, ground ginger, minced garlic, exanthin gum, a bell pepper, and unsalted cashews. So let's start by mixing together some of the sauce ingredients in a bowl. We have coconut aminos or soy sauce if you eat soy. Um, this is rice vinegar, tablespoon of rice vinegar, a half a teaspoon of sesame oil, keto brown sweetener, one tablespoon, and fish sauce. And I know fish sauce is kind of an unusual ingredient, but I don't recommend skipping it because it adds a lot of flavor. And if you omit it, the dish seems just a little bit boring to me. And you can find it on the Asian food aisle at most grocery stores. So we'll just mix this together and set it aside. So now I'm gonna have my husband, Caleb here, chop the chicken into one inch bite-sized pieces. And we have chicken thighs here because chicken breasts tend to turn out just a little bit dry in this recipe. So let's get this chopped. Okay, so now that the chicken is chopped and we discarded some of the extra fatty pieces, we're gonna cook it in a single layer in a cast iron skillet. Um, don't just dump it all in. It needs to be in a single layer or it won't brown properly. And also, if your chicken is wet, you need to pat it dry with a paper towel because that will also prevent it from uh, browning properly. But ours is pretty dry. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just gonna put this in like this and spread it around so it's not stacked on top of each other. You don't want to use your hands? I do. I just didn't know if you wanted to No, you can't. Yeah, you can help. Okay, we'll just get it in. We don't want to overcrowd the skillet, so we'll we'll cook this batch of chicken, set it aside, and then cook the next batch of chicken. Let's see. How's that? Is that kind of that's I don't know. That's probably about full. Okay, and I'm gonna sprinkle this, or do you wanna sprinkle it with some salt? Okay, just you just sprinkle it with just a little bit of salt, and we're gonna not touch it for two or three minutes. So the bottom gets really nicely brown. And then we're gonna stir it around to finish browning it on all sides, set it aside, and then do the same with the next batch of chicken. So the chicken has gotten really nicely browned. So now we're gonna add a tablespoon of minced garlic. Thank you. One and a half teaspoon of ground ginger. And a green bell pepper. I almost said red, but it is not red, it is green. green. Yeah. And we're just gonna let this stir fry for three to five minutes or until the bell pepper is nice and tender. Now let's deglaze the pan with some sherry cooking wine. Um, and this deglaze in a pan, it just basically means scraping up those yummy bits on the bottom with some liquid. I and love those yummy bits. I know, they're so flavorful. And you can use chicken broth, like I said at the beginning of the video, but I really like the flavor of the sherry cooking wine. You want to do it or you want to start? Yes, how much? Um, about four tablespoons, so it's about just four turns of the pan. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Four, that's probably. All right. I did three of those. Those were big turns. Okay, yeah. so now we can just like scrape all those bits up with mm -hmm. that liquid, see? Yeah, can we do it? Yeah, okay. And then we're just gonna let it evaporate off just a little bit and while you while you scrape up all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we'll add the sauce. Okay, here I'll stir and you, you pour in the sauce that we made at the beginning of the video. Mm. Yum. Now, all we have to do is thicken it. And we're gonna thicken it with xanthan gum. 
Um, if you're paleo or you're sensitive to exanthin gum, oh, don't put it in yet. <laughs> you can use tapioca flour or arrowroot flour mixed with some cold water, um, but it has a lot more carbs and it's not as keto friendly. So we're gonna use a quarter teaspoon of exanthin gum and you can't just dump it in. Um, the trick to yeah. using exanthin gum, I if you, you don't do I can see you just fix it up. I know. I knew there was a trick. Yeah. Okay. Because if you just dump it in, it's all going to clump up and it's not going to thicken. Okay. So. Yeah, I was not going to do that. I would never Okay. So maybe, you, I don't know how you, the, how you want to sprinkle it in. I usually put it in my hand and just like really lightly sprinkle while I stir real fast. Or you can do it or however. Okay. You want to stir. And then you try to stir it as quickly as possible to, to mix it up before it starts clumping. So let's just get it mixed in here. I'm just following you around. Okay, yeah, follow me around and get, get all the juices all thickened up. And also you wanna be careful not to use too much because if you use too much exanthin gum, it'll make the sauce kind of slimy and you do not want the sauce to be slimy. Nobody wants slimy sauce. No, that'd be so gross. But if it's not quite thick, you can always add a few extra pinches. I think I usually do add just a tiny bit, but you always got to be careful. You don't want to add too much. No. Nope. Okay. Secret. Yeah. So how's it looking? How thick? It's great. it's thicking. It's just thicker than that. Every week he has that. You just need to know. Of course. <laughs> Let's just. I'm going to add another pinch or two because it still seems just a tiny bit thin to me. Okay. Okay, get it nice and mixed in. Okay, that's probably good. So I almost forgot the cashews. Let's pour in the cashews. And cashews are a bit high in carbs, so we're just gonna use a quarter of a cup. Um, but, it's, but it's plenty to get a nice crunch. And get it all mixed up with the, um, with the sauce. So it'll be nice and flavorful, so good. And you can toast your cashews too. You can just put them on a dry skillet and toast them until they become fragrant, maybe three to five minutes, but I don't know. I don't, I don't usually do this. <laughs> it's just easier. This looks great. Okay, so let's get some bowls and try it. Okay, hopefully I don't spill this everywhere. I have a tendency to, oh, I did. I always, <laughs> I always spill the food. Oh, you know what, I think, <laughs> It's because there's slats in it. I, I didn't get a solid wooden mm -hmm. spoon. Yeah, See, but even if it's you not had a my... real spoon, I think you would have spilled something. I think so too. Yeah. I'm so messy. I always spill everything. Cooking is messy. Yeah, it is messy. Oh, man, it, it's everywhere. Looks okay, good. are you ready to try it? You want to garnish this thing You know first? what? I, want, I can't stand it. I want to wipe the table off. Okay. <laughs> I want to wipe it off first. Oh, yeah, let's put some great, let's put some green onions on. So pretty. And some sesame seeds. That's cute. Just sprinkle some on here. That looks awesome. Oh, it does look good, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, let's try this. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. That sauce is good. Lots of flavor. Mm-hmm. Lots of flavor. Yeah. I like the little crunch from the sesame seeds and the cashews. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the sauce, and then we just put it over cauliflower rice, and I'll have a link to my cauliflower rice below, along with the link to the full recipe in the description. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it, and if you mm -hmm. do, be sure to like us down below. 